Welcome back ladies and gents. I think this will be the last video for learning A and B, or at least I hope it will be. Um, now this one I've named uh, section 17, putting the dashboard together, because we've pretty much done everything we need to do. Up to this point you should have at least um, highlighted, identified, explained and shown exactly what tools you've used, how you've used them and why you've used them and exactly how they'll be useful to the end user, the user being the person who's going to use the dashboard at the end. So in this case, it's the cinema, so it'll be the manager or the supervisors at the cinema. Now, obviously in the real uh, authorised assessment brief, it'll be a different context, a different situation, different business. So you talk about them instead. So now that we've done everything else, and hopefully by this point you've got all the screenshots, you've noted everything down, you've elaborated and explained everything, and you've also put the um, comments in, in your spreadsheet, we need to put them all to one place. I want to show you an end result here. So this is an example of someone who got a distinction, which is obviously the highest grade you can get um, from last year. And this is what we were trying to basically get, a one-page spread, a summary of all the data that's been turned into information and it's basically going to have all this showing and this is a, quite a lot really when you think about it and it's got you know a, a variation of different things and some of you may have more than this some of you may have less than this but the main thing is that we need to have uh, something like this so as you can see we need to have a title in there somewhere um, this one here is called travel dashboard analysis of data um, and we need to have everything else that's got that we have uh, made so far so I'm going to go back to mine as an example and as you can see here I've got my pivot table here with this chart um, pivot table here with this uh, graph um, another one here another one there this is the one with the macros and hopefully you've got a few more macros in your other charts um, and as I said earlier on, and I, I've mentioned a few times, you need to have comments in, in your sp spreadsheet just because I haven't done it doesn't mean you uh, you don't need to. I've, the purpose of these videos is to show you examples. It's not exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, You will get hopefully better ideas, even some inspiration from here, but the tools with the focus you're taking away, then applying them in the context uh, that you are then put into. So we've got all these graphs here, and they have to come into uh, the dashboard, which I'm going to show you in a second. Then, of course, I've got my original data that's uh, uh, it's been transformed into a table with conditional formatting here. We've got the fr uh, fr uh, the uh, the freeze pane being utilized at the top so that the headers always stay at the top no matter what we do with the filters there as well so those are, those are some tools there that you will hopefully get marked for that's my second version that I needed uh, there's the list of movies the genres and how long each film or movie is in terms of minutes and then this is what I called a summary sheet now I'm going to change this to a dashboard uh, because that's what it actually what it is and before I do anything else and transfer those charts and those uh, graphs and uh, you know those diagrams over to this uh, page, uh, we've got all these summaries here, which is nice. Um, but what we need to do is put some titles in here so that it works. Um, and it might be how, good to have a title at the top of this one as well. Now, it's been a while, but I'm going to just check if there's a header that we can actually put in here. Let me just check header and fuss. So there we go. Okay, so let me see how this looks. Mm, I'm not I'm not I'm not feeling that one second. Let me just double check something. I want to cross this off. Um page layout. Okay. View. Um where have we gone? Actually, if I just click inside here, no, it's not in here so what's happened let me just double check sorry uh, page layout okay let me just change this first of all so you may have to do this anyway so I'm gonna go to print and uh, so yeah first of all we don't want it to be um, vertical we want it to be horizontal anyway so we want it to be landscape Give that a second there we go and we want to have active sheet that's fine let's go for narrow there we go and we want to fit the sheet in one page okay so that should change it hopefully let's go back okay that's a little bit better but um let's see view
Okay, so landscape now is good. Print area. Okay, we'll do that in a second as well. Okay. Um, one second. I don't seem to see normal. Is that going to change it? Okay, um, this is bugging me because I don't want this to look like this. I'm going to just get rid of this. Okay, I'm going to let me just check if I've done anything. No, I haven't. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to cross this off. I'm not going to save this and open it up again because I don't like that view. Let's go back here. It is the most recent one. Macro label, there we are. Okay, so we're not going to use header and footer. It just doesn't look right, in my opinion, anyway. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, which is to basically put in a title manually. So I'm going to go back to my summary sheet. There it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top left-hand side here and insert instead. There we go. And we're going to put a title in here now. Because I don't know how far I'm going to go, I'm going to leave that for now. But I do want a title here for this area here we want a title for this summary breakdown and then a title for this summary breakdown and it'd be good to have maybe charts for this here and this here maybe some maybe two or three from here and maybe at least one from here so we'll see so so first step is going to work on these and then we'll transfer over the other charts from the other pages or the other uh, worksheets so let's merge these two together so you go to home and merge and center we can make a bold uh, we can center it, center it, and let's put red font. Okay, so if you type it in now, so this is going to be, let's see, number of participants, average booking, process rating. So let's call this um, something like cinema um, performance breakdown or something like that. Or overall breakdown, overall performance maybe, overall performance breakdown. Okay, now that's not centered, so let's have a look here, there. Okay, that, that makes more sense. So that now is matching with that. So um, to make this even easier, and this is the thing, you, you need to play around with it so that it's you know easier to see. I'm going to put a black um, background for this, see how that looks. That's a bit hard to read actually, isn't it? Um, perhaps make this slightly larger okay leave it like that for now now I'm gonna copy this and paste it here okay that we have the exact same format and I'm just gonna type in what I need for this section um, let's see this one's going to be about movie breakdown individual movie performance breakdown maybe or data analysis yeah, in fact, instead of breakdown, put data analysis. Data analysis. There we go. And we're going to copy this and paste it in here. Oh, sorry. Copy, paste. And this is going to be individual genre or movie genre. Let's put genre. So there's no confusion. There we go. Okay, so we've got that broken down. Now, if you want to take it one step further, you can. Um, make it look a little bit more obvious that that is actually one section by putting bold lines, borders on the outside. So it really does break it up a little bit. And as you can see, we're just sort of finalizing this, this page. So that looks a little bit more... Um, obvious and looks a little bit easier easier on the eyes now this is an area that you know people get to choose from so and I don't, i've never tried this before the combo box i'm going to give it a go i'm going to make this uh, yellow yeah perfect so that makes it easy to see that that is a selection so people click in here and choose and as you see 
these do change as a result. Okay, so we've got that done. And now let's see if we can get our first chart in here. Now, looking at this, now there's a lot of work in here. So we've got the number of customers who have paid to watch this film, total revenue made from this film, percentage of, uh, of total sales, um, average revenue per customer. So maybe we can put... Um, the ratings as a bar chart maybe I don't know let's have a look so feel free to play around with it I'm gonna try to go for let's see recommended ones let's see what they suggest so if they got this and they got a pie chart they got that let's go all charts so bar charts could do that. Let's have a look what else is there. Line charts don't look right. Nope, don't like that one. Don't like that one. No, no, no. I reckon one of these common ones makes more sense. Yeah, something like that. I reckon this one. Press OK throw it in there and you can throw that in here um, we could even make a chart for this one here as well to have the average booking process and so on and so forth um, but it's up to you you have to decide which ones you need and which ones you want to put in there now what we need to do let's see Chart title. I wonder if we can change that. Select data. <coughs> Excuse me. No, forget that. Not not that. Um. T -t 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 No, it's not there. I want to go to design instead. Add element. Let's see. We want chart title. More title options. And I'm hoping Oh, it's not showing anything. Let me cross this off. Let's have a look. Chart title. Above the chart is fine. No, it's not giving me that information. So I wonder if I select data again and do. this and then get rid of what I don't need so we only want the last one so we don't need actually we could have don't need that don't need that let's see how this looks so Actually, let's have a look at this. So we want that, that, that. Okay, press OK. Right, now let's see. Just want to just see if I change this, does it change? Yes, perfect. So you can see the name changes here. That's what I was looking for. So the only thing that's needed is the title itself. So the title is going to be Movie Rating Data Analysis. Okay. And you can change, hopefully, the location of the title. So just play around with these to see which one you prefer. So that's got 
Oh, not you. No, let's have a look. So that's got the number as well as the chart. Hmm. I quite like this one. Yeah, let's do this. Drag it out a little bit, maybe. There we go. And so you got that there. So this, hopefully, now will change according to the film. Perfect. Okay, so not only does this change, you have the tools and the features, the filters there as well. Um, so, once you got that, what else can we do? Let's have a look. Perhaps we can make one for this one here as well. So, I'm going to select this, insert, let's look at the recommended. Let's click on this one maybe. Yeah, let's look at this for now. And push this down here for now. And let's see. Um, Drag this down. There we go. And this should also change. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to change the layout just because I think it's limited in the details. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And let's look at the select data as well because I think we don't need total revenue so total revenue can come out of this and the number of customers let's see how that looks no that doesn't look right I think this may not work unfortunately let's have a look I think it's better that's what it is it's better as a bar chart let's do a different type of chart Have a little play around here. Um, let's have one of these. So again, let's see if I change this now to Action Sci-Fi, it tells you the number and the percentage as well. So we need to have the rest of them in here as well. So so now that we have these two charts, now of course you will have. A, I've just noticed a small little uh, problem here. Can you see how this is not fitting in? So this is why it's well worth checking that things work when you try it. So some of these fields or these d this data information will be larger than others. And therefore, you have to you know change the size of the cells appropriately as well, accordingly. So anyway, I've got two different charts there. Now the next job is to get the other charts from the other pages. Now it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. You just simply want to get it from here, copy and paste. Now there's, there's, there's a small little thing though you need to consider. We want the charts to be linked as well, so that when it th when things change here, it also changes over on the dashboard. So the simple case is simp the quickest way of getting all across is right click and copy, like so. So this part's easy, and then you go to your dashboard. If you can find it. Oh, I need to change that um, and paste it. Now, the pasting is where the, the interesting part is. Never use this one here, which is a picture. Now, if you change it as a picture, it won't have that link because this is a picture. If you keep it with the source formatting, it means it keeps whatever the source has, which means where it came from originally. Now, of course, 
we don't have much space here, so we do have to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to click away first so I can see it. I'm going to re zoom out a little bit. And you can see that it's far too large, especially if you want to have other charts in here as well. So I'm going to drag this in a little bit more and maybe put it in here. Now, this is where uh, you will have to start thinking very carefully about uh, the positioning of things and how some things will look. So I've got that there. I'm going to push this one across here just so it's a little bit more tighter and make sure things are linked and closely aligned to each other. So I've got two there. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. I'm going to see, I'll see. I may have to push this up uh, to see. In fact, I might just do it now. I'm going to do this, actually. Sorry, just clicked it on the wrong side. Just click the edge. There we go. Push this up. And then you could afford to maybe perhaps uh, push one one of these up. Now, remember, I'm just playing around with it here. You have the ability and therefore the uh, flexibility to mess around with this and decide. Now, I just want to show you something. Just like how this chart changes with this table and this chart changes with this table. If I go back to the original version of this, so total sales revenue per movie. So if I go back here, and let's just say, so this is the original one here. I change um, this here and just got rid of the last ones here. So you can see I've got um, the big slick mud, ma uh, mud bound and the green fog. So let's find one those ones there. In fact, I can look at them one step at a time. So wormwood, wormwood. I can keep that one. Twin Peaks. Uh, I can keep that one. Super dark times. Let's take that one off. Shape of the water. Take that one off. Phantom. Keep that one. Only the brave can come out. Mudbound can come out. Mother, 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 mother. So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm basically trying, looking for these ones here, just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, mother can stay. It's over here. I think there it is. Um, Love Simon. Can stay. It's over here. Ladybird can stay. It can stay. I, Tonya can stay. The green fog, fog, fog yet that can come out. Good time can come out. God's own country can come out. Ghost story, ghost story, ghost story can come out. Get out can stay. Gemini can stay. The Florida Project. There it is, we can keep that one. Detroit can stay. Den of Thieves can come out. Columbus can come out. Coco is there, so that can stay. The Big Sick can stay. Oh, sorry, come out, I think. Let me just check. Yep, out. Beach Rats. Beach Rats can come out. And babysitter can come out. Annabelle can stay it's there. That's it. Press OK. Now what this will do is basically take out those small ones. Twin Peaks. Let's take that one out as well. Twin Peaks. OK. Now, as you've seen, this is connected to that. So this pivot table, the list has gone smaller. This has gone a bit more um, easy to see as well because we've got the largest uh, uh, performing movies there. But in theory, the dashboard should have changed as well. <clears throat> there we go. And that's the point. We want the charts to be linked to each table, to each chart that it comes from originally. Now, I need to change this to dashboard again. Now, what I want you to do, I'm going to pause the video now. I want to keep doing this until you have all the charts in here. And then we'll talk about the title and how we can make sure the page is set out so that it fits into one page if it was to be printed off. Okay, so give that a go and I'll show you what mine looks like in a second. Okay, so welcome back. <clears throat> this is what um, I've come across with. I've had to really play around with it quite a bit. And this is the point you have to basically see what works well where and try your best to put things as close to uh, the appropriate uh, chart. So this um, slicer here belongs to this chart. So it wouldn't make sense to have this slicer over over the, over to the left hand side while the chart is uh, over to the right hand side. So you want to keep them as close as possible. And 
<coughs> obviously drag out the edges and expand or reduce the size of the graphs or charts accordingly to see if you can see it properly. Um, Another thing I want to highlight is you can see that the buttons, I've had to copy them across uh, and reduce the size of the, uh, the, the, the text itself and the buttons, but the buttons won't work in, because the macros that we created in a previous lesson, in a previous video, sorry, um, was a recording and a macro for a different sheet. So when you do this, it's going to think something else. So what you need to do is create those macros again. So be mindful about when you things when you put, start putting things into your dashboard, and just check that things basically work, buttons especially. So it's a simple case of just re-recording and to be fair, it doesn't take that long at all. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna to go to view macros and record. And I'm gonna call this one um, pi chart uh, two, just so I remember that this is that. Press okay. And I'm going to click on this chart here, then go to design, change type, and make sure it says pie chart, and press OK. Done. And then you go back to um, view, macro, stop recording. And then the one, macro, record, and this one's going to be bar chart two, press OK. Click onto the charts first, then design, change type, click on bar. Um, actually, I quite like column. It's up to you. I'm going to go for column. Uh, press OK. There it is. And then you go to view and stop recording. Now that they're both you know recorded, all you gotta do is make sure you click on the correct one. So pie chart, click on the edge and go to assign, and we want to choose the number two version. So that's pie chart, so pie chart two. Okay. And then right click on the bar chart, so that's gonna be assigned to bar chart two. Press okay. Now if I click away and then use my mouse, hopefully. For some reason, it's not showing it. One second. So wanna I think it's because the original ones are still there. Let me just check. Okay, perhaps we need to change, delete the original ones. Let me just check that. Let me go into view macros uh, view macros so I've got my original ones here <clears throat> I wonder if I can delete the macros from here you know what I'm going to do I'm going to delete it and just create a new one and hopefully this, this should work so I'm going to go to insert shape Sometimes just finding the easy solution just is the best way to do it. So I'm going to just drag a little box out here. Won't mess around with the colors just yet. I'm going to put pie, change, oh. change to pie, chart. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. Um, home. Let's make it a size nine for now. Drag it out. If it will allow me, there we go. Pie chart. Drag it back in again. Okay, and let's change the color. So format and you choose the theme that you want. Try to keep it consistent to uh, what you did early on. So I'm going to go for this and then change it to red.
Okay, so right click. I'm going to change the size afterwards, but let's see. Assign, and this is a pie chart 2. So pie chart 2, there we go. Done. Just going to click away and see if it works. There we go. It's working. Um, so yeah, just have to redo it basically. Just going to click on this and uh, mess around with the size. Um, and then, of course, you have to make it again. Okay, it's messing me around there. Um, anyway, so I think copy and paste might be the easiest way. There we go. Change that to bar. Right click on the edge, assign, and of course, this is bar. So there we go. And then we can move this across to there for now and click away and let's see if it works oh well, i'm not sure why but it's changed this one here very strange so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to just delete it and insert it separately I was hoping I could just copy and paste it, but for some reason it's not working. So I'm going to drag it out instead. Uh, format, and it was in here. Change the color scheme, there we go. Change to bar chart. I'm going to select it, change it to a size 9, I believe the other one was. So let's keep consistent. There we go. Right click on the outside, assign, and let's try this again. Bar, there we go. Right, hopefully. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not working. Very strange. It should work, but for some reason it's not. Okay, I'm going to have to play it around with this. And this is the point. You have to test them. You can't just assume it works straight away. So what I may have to do is delete the original ones and redo them again. It's a simple case of doing it again. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to do, though, is to finish off this page. And um, obviously, these buttons will have to look into. I know that the first one works, but this one doesn't. And I want to look at that myself. Uh, just delete that and get it out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to basically put a title at the top here. So I'm going to just select all of this here, go to home and merge and center and keep it consistent. Let's go for a black and let's go for a white writing maybe this time. Let's see, it might, be, might make more sense and make it bold. Now, the title, one second, if I put it center, there centered as well now the title you decide so for, i quite like what they said here so travel dashboard analysis of data so maybe cinema dashboard data analysis yeah so i'm gonna put cinema um dashboard data analysis there we go now you can if you want to make this larger, but at the moment I'm struggling for space, but I can very simply drag this down a little bit and this one as well. And this one. And then go back inside here and extend it. And there you go, it just looks a little bit more uh, presentable. So this is your aim, boys and girls, you must um, get your tables, your charts, and so on and so forth in there. I'm going to have a little play around with this. Um, but as I said, it's a simple case of just deleting and trying again. As you've seen, this does work. I just have to um, make the macros again. Now, if you're wondering how to delete your macros and do it again, it's a simple case of going to view, going to macros, and just deleting them all. So go to view here and just delete all of them. So I'm just going to cl click and delete. Yes, I do. Macros, view, Delete, view, macros, delete. I'm 
okay? So what you'll have to do is redo your macros. So if you've got macros in every single one, just make sure you just double check them. Now, if you've got too many, to do, um, then of course you'll have to double check that they're working in the first place. So I know for a fact I've only done two, uh, I think it's these ones here. Now obviously they're not going to be working anymore because I have no macros, there's nothing there. It says there, no, there's, no, there's no macros available, so I have to redo them. So it's not really hard to do, um, especially from, from my case because I've only got two there and of course I'm going to have only two here as well. Um, the problem is obviously the size as well. Now the reason why I've tried to do it here now, some of you might say, but you know, why can't you just zoom out? And have a few more there. Uh, the reason for that is because you want to keep it at 100% because that's the default setting. Now of course printing wise um, it would have to be this page, this whole page uh, as is. So if I go here now, uh, let's have a look if I go to, no not you sorry, page layout. Make sure it is port landscape. Let's keep margins as narrow as possible. And let's go to print area. So I'm going to set the print area. Ooh, makes more sense if I select it first. So I'm going to drag all this all this down to about here. So you can see it's selected right to the bottom. And of course the title as well. And then if I go to page layout and go to set uh, print area, set print area, it's selected that. Now, how do I know that's worked? Well, if I give it a second, go to file, print, and give it a second there we go now that's not fitted everything in because i have to click on scaling and put fit the sheet on one page and now that should hopefully as if by magic put it into one page okay now this tells me that actually i could go down a little bit more but play around with it have a see it's up to you as long as you can fit it on one page okay so then in, in, it needs to be on one page and that gives me an idea that actually i could actually um drag them down a little bit more make them a bit more spacious uh, and easier on the eyes now if you've got more charts in this case i've only got one two three four five six six charts and then three tables some of you may have seven eight nine some of you may have ten when you do the real thing in the assessment or the the authorized assessment brief it really is down to what the actual context of the scenario is the situation that you were placed in so you have to play around with it and but that's basically it boys and girls this is the end of learning aim b there is if you haven't gathered a lots of trialing and error in this it's, you have to play with it and you have to test the waters you have to change things as you go along and at one point something might work then you come up with a different solution that's actually better and it messes something else up somewhere else. That's completely normal, so don't get stressed out by that. There's nothing wrong with redoing certain things. If you find an easy way, that's great. So remember, remember, what you're trying to do is basically maximize your, your marks by providing as many tools and as many features as you can and explain each one in the process. So the last screenshot you need is this here, this page. And then you're going to put it into this section here. And as always, you're going to explain what you've done, how you've done it, why you've done it, um, and how this is going to be useful. And start thinking about what each of these sections could be used for, because you're going to need that for learning aim C. Um, good luck, and uh, I'll see you in the next uh, uh, learning aim.